Thank God, thank God for our worship team that take time Sunday after Sunday to come and just lead us in the worship experience. And I hope that you guys actually do take time to pray for them. It's not an easy task, but they are allowing God to use them mightily in this process. Ministry update and everything else that has gone before now. Um, my name is Abimbola Afolabi. It's a benefit and an opportunity to me and a great honor to be able to bring this message this morning. As I said last Sunday, we're going to be continuing on this theme of how to win life's battles. And as we saw last week, we went through the story of Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20. Uh, we, we, we read from verses 1 to 12. And it's how to win life's battles. Battles in life are inevitable. My battle may not be yours, but we are all going to face battles at some stage in our lives. And we noted that in order to win life's battles last week, you must identify the enemy. You need to admit your own inadequacy and need to take your problems to the Lord. We need to know that, and as I said last week, you can't live the Christian life in your own strength because you have a power shortage. You need the power that comes from letting God's spirit live through you and in you. You see, I'm sure you guys think that you got away because knowing that I'm a doctor. Now, try to imagine this. This is a glove. Now, I'm not about to perform surgery live. But on its own, it's limp and powerless. But once the hand fills that glove, it becomes useful and effective. The same thing with us. The same thing with the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God in us, we are powerless and we are useless. We may not fancy it, but that's just the truth. We cannot do much on our own. And so, today as we seek the Lord's face to go into this message, I'm believing that God is going to lead us, he's going to guide us, and he's going to teach us himself through his word. Let us pray together before we start. Our Father and our God, it's another day in your courts and another day in your presence. It's another day for you to deposit your word into our spirit. We know from your word that it's not by power nor by might, only by your spirit. And as we rely on you to deliver this word, I believe that our spirit will be receptive to what you have to say to us. Anything that we clutter it, we cause it to be removed even right now. And we give you free access to do what only you can do in us and through us. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen and amen. See, most of us are familiar with the story of David and Goliath. We learned that in Sunday school. And that's one story, whether people are believers in Christ or not, they know. We use it in speeches talking about David and Goliath. We refer to things as your Goliath because it looks like a mammoth task an insurmountable problem. See, but believe it or not, fighting Goliath was the easiest life's battle for David. Because as far as David was concerned, at that stage of his life, he just went back to the record of God in his life. When he was asked, how are you going to fight this giant? The whole army of Israel was afraid of him. He said, you know what? When I was watching over my father's ship, the bear came. I tore the bear. The lion came. I tore the lion. And he said, this uncircumcised Philistine 
is going to be like one of them. He was that confident of the God that he knows and the God that he serves. And as I said last Sunday, all these things in the Old Testament were recorded for us to learn the principle of how God operates and to apply it to our life. And we saw in this particular instance, Jehoshaphat faced a difficult task as well. Three armies against him. They were ready to destroy him, destroy and wipe out Israel off the face of the map. But for God. So David faced other life battles. For years, he was a fugitive, running for his life when Saul wanted to kill him. Want to destroy him because of jealousy. He also faced battle with his own son. He had to run away at some stage from his son. These are life battles for David. And as I said, we all have life battles. Some are fighting it alone. Some are fighting it quietly. For some, life's battle is in the public. Regardless of what it is, we know that battles are real. See, David, at some stage in his attempt to survive, to escape the hand of the attacker, reached his breaking point. It's in Psalm 27, verse 13, the Bible says that about David, I will have lost heart unless I have believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When you get to that point, <laughs> you're really in a bad way. Because he knew that a few times he's been this close, this, this close to death. And he had to say, I will have lost heart unless I have believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Can you identify with that? Some of us are going through stuff. You see, some battles bring you to your breaking point. And the question for you this morning is, have you reached your breaking point? And if so, you have two options. It's either you break down or you break through. It all depends on what you do. See, there's an old saying that the same sunshine that melts the butter hardens the clay. And some will say, the same hot water that melts the butter just cook the egg. See, when trouble comes, you can either turn against God because you served him and you don't understand why he's allowing it or turn to him for strength and understanding. And I'm going to say that again. When trouble comes, and it will come, they come in different forms. I've had my own share of troubles. You can either turn against God because you served him, you expect him to just do your bidding, and you don't understand why is God allowing this. Or you can turn to him for strength, and understanding and say, God, what are you doing through all of this? Let me know. Help me to understand. It's uncomfortable. It's unbearable. It's tough. It's rough. And I'm about to say enough. But God, just show me. Show me what you are doing. And that's why David, what David says next is so important. Because first he said, if I didn't believe in God to see the goodness of God in the land of the living, I'm, I'm gone. But this is what he says next. He says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Sometimes God changes our circumstances. Other times, he uses them to strengthen us. 
Sometimes he changes our circumstances, but sometimes he uses our circumstances to strengthen us. Try to understand this. It's not just about you. <laughs> it's not just about you. If it's all about you, God will make it a goody-goody life. Just, just enjoy yourself. But those God wants to reach through you. And for him to do that, there's some things he needs to do. There's some things that need to shift. There's some situations that need to change. You see, in 2 Corinthians 1, 4, the Bible says that God comforts us in all our troubles. Now, not some of them. And one thing I want you to note when it comes to the word of God, that word A-L-L means all and it means all. <laughs> Nothing else. It's, it comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. If you never walk in somebody else's shoes, you don't know what they feel. And the experiences that we go through in life fighting our battles will be useful to somebody else later on down the line. And it actually pays us to learn what God wants us to learn so that we can be of benefit to others. You can't hug somebody and say, I know what you are going through if you've never been through it. People know when you are genuine and when you are not. But when you've been through stuff, people can tell that you know what you are talking about. So nothing catches God of God. And nothing is too hard for him to handle. The situation you are in right now can become a platform for him to demonstrate his love and care for you. Word of God says that the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him. So we're going to go back to our passage, 2 Chronicles 20. And I'm going to read first verse 15. And then we're going to take off. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 15 says that, And he said, Listen, O Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. The Bible already recorded that Jehoshaphat was afraid. That's the natural human tendency. When we face our own life battles, we get afraid, we get anxious, we get panicky. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde. Why? For the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. If you're making notes, just write this down. To fight life battles, you need to learn to relax in faith. Now, I'm asking us to do something very challenging and difficult. That's why I put the word learn. It doesn't come natural, but you need to learn to relax in faith. See, notice how God responded to Jehoshaphat's prayer. He says, the battle is not yours, but God's. See, many of us wear ourselves out trying to fight God's battles in our own strength. In the initial flush of becoming Christians, and I remember this very well, it's about 40 years more, uh, we are eager to win the world to Jesus and want to go out and single-handedly bring about his kingdom. <laughs> That's because we don't realize what's involved. Then after we've worked hard under our own steam, reality begins to set in. We end up crawling back on our hands and knees, disappointed because we think we've let God down. You haven't. It's just useful exuberance. That's not bad. 
But he reassures us. God, in his tender love, will reassure us, you didn't let me down because you were not holding me up to start with. <laughs> the truth is, we don't hold God up. He holds us up. We don't have him in our hands. He has us in his hands. And he's telling us to relax in faith and let him do the work through us. See, there comes a time after you've prayed and you have fasted, you relax in faith. See, Paul, writing to the Colossians, said, as you receive Christ, Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. In other words, remember how you first became a believer. We did by simple faith in the finished work of Calvary and continue to live by simple faith. See, as we get older in our Christian work, we complicate stuff. We don't use that simple faith that we had at the beginning. When a simple message was preached, and in simple faith, we say, Lord, just accept me. And he did. And that's how Paul admonished the church in Colossae to continue to live their life. Simple faith. No complication. God is simple. We are the ones that complicate him. <laughs> and we need to learn not to do that. You didn't become a Christian by striving for perfection and doing good works. The good works follows as a result of your transformed and renewed life. God works, good works have nothing to do with it. Salvation is a free gift. And when you are offering a gift, it's either you accept or you reject the gift. We, as believers in Christ, we have chosen to accept that gift. God doesn't need us to micromanage things. This is hard for some people not to do. God doesn't need us to micromanage things that A, we join to B and B to C, and the dots we have to connect at this point and at this juncture. I am not saying don't make plans, you know, have goals and all those kind of things. But when it comes to the details and micromanaging, God has the last say. He has everything under control, and he wants us to relax and let him live through us. The bottom line here is, victory in life is a gift from God. Thank God who always leads us in victory because of Christ, 2 Corinthians 2.14. 2, and the word to Jehoshaphat is the same word to us. When we are facing life battles, remember, the battle is not yours, but God's. In verse 17, this is what it says in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 17. It says that you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position. And see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. He repeats it again. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. I don't know how many times God whispered to us, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed. Because he knows our tendency to be afraid. Our tendency to panic. And he reassures us so many times, I got this. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, and the, the hand of the Lord will be with you. And so, if you're taking note, write this down. So, win life's battles. Stand firm. See, there's time to pray, and there comes a time when you stop praying 
and listen to what God has to say. I've said this more than, more than once. God's way of dealing with issues is not always agreeable or appealing to us. However, it works if you are obedient. Notice what God told Jehoshaphat. Stand firm. What does it mean to stand firm when you are in a crisis? I'll tell you. It's a mental attitude of quiet confidence that says, I'm going, go, I'm going to trust God. It's a mental attitude of quiet confidence that says, I'm going to trust God. And no matter how the battle rages all around you, people are falling right, left, and center, you keep that mental attitude and say, I'm going to, go, I'm going to trust God. One pastor writes this. He said, this is something I'm slowly learning. It's never God's will for me to run from a difficult situation. If I do, the situation will only follow and catch up with me a little further down the line. It may not look the same, but it will be the same. Why? Because God wants to teach me that he is sufficient for any problem. If we don't learn this today, we may learn it next week. If we don't learn it next week, we may learn it next month. If we don't learn it next month, we may learn it next year. But eventually, as long as we remain children of God, we're going to learn it. <laughs> and I want to encourage you, believer, the sooner, the better. <laughs> the sooner, the better. See, we can save ourselves problem by standing firm and waiting on God in quiet confidence. So what do we stand firm on? Because he says stand. We have to be standing on something. You need to have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. That's what he says in verse 20. See, first, we need to stand firm on the character of God. God is faithful, and we can depend on him. Second, we need to stand firm on the writings that he has given us through his prophets, which is, in other words, the truth of the Bible. That's what you stand firm on. What's the character of God? His unchangeableness. The fact that the Bible says that he cannot lie. That's the character of God. And secondly, we stand on the truth that has been written in his word. We need to know the Bible is God's word. It's not just a history book. It is God's word, and we need only rely in quiet confidence on his written promises. So today, stand firm on the unchanging character of God and the unchanging promises of God. Verse 21, and this is what it says. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire, as they went before the army and say, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. So write this down. To win life's battles, thank God in advance. You see, imagine standing on the mountain top, looking across a valley towards a mountain on the other side. A big battle is about to take place down below. On one mountain, three enemy nations are poised and waiting to devastate Israel. And the Israelites are on your mountain. And their leader, Jehoshaphat, tells them, here is God's battle plan. All of those who sing in the choir, I want you out front. <laughs> I'm sure some of us will say, oh, king, are you sure? <laughs> We're going to battle, you know. 
are you really sure that's what you want to do? He said, yes, that's my battle plan. That's the battle plan I received from God. As I said last week, the way God deals with battles may not be appealing to us. It sounds illogical sometimes. It doesn't just make sense. But if you're ready and willing to follow God, you will see victory. The worship team in front. So the army goes marching into battle with the, with the choir on the front, singing praises to God. Did the plan work? Yes, sir, it did. The opposing armies got confused and they ended up killing each other. And all of God's people had to do was divide up the plunder. They didn't have to fight. They didn't have to lift any weapon. They didn't have to do anything. God's battle plan works. And it works all the time. Why did God do it this way? Just, just think about that for a minute. You see, he did it as a visual object. He's trying to teach them a lesson to praise him in faith even before, before the victory takes place. He wants them to praise him ahead of time. See, when you pray, Lord, I know I have problems, but I thank you in advance because there's no solution you can't take care of. When you begin to pray like that and to thank him in advance, three things happen. Your atmosphere changes. You no longer feel afraid because you have the assurance of God's presence. Number two, your attitude changes. You begin to say, Lord, this may be too big for me, but it's not too big for you. <laughs> it's not too big for you. And number three, your approach changes. Instead of speaking words of doubt and unbelief, you start speaking words of faith. And because your faith honors God, he honors your faith, and the battle begins to turn in your favor. And here's another important key to victory. Don't just praise God for a while and then quit. You need to keep praising him until your breakthrough comes. Just keep praising him. Sometimes the battle may be so hot and it looks like you are losing. God don't lose no battles. You keep on. Keep praising God until your breakthrough comes. As we've seen this week, to win life battles, you need to learn to relax in faith. You need to stand firm. And also, thank God in advance. This is the God that we serve. We are his children. And as I said last week, these principles are applicable if you have committed your life to God. And you can honestly and truly say, I'm a child of God. You've made him your Lord, your Savior. But if you haven't, and you're watching this broadcast, it's not too late to do so. All you need to do at this time is bow your head and let us pray together. Pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I accept that I'm a sinner, and I repent of my sin. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. This day, this minute, I now surrender my life to you. Make me your child from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Believe it or not, if you pray that simple prayer, you are a child of God. You belong to his kingdom. You're part of his citizens of his kingdom. Let us know. Contact us on our Facebook page. Leave a comment. YouTube, online. Just let us know the work that God has done in your life so that we can continue to help you on your journey, continue to pray for you, support you. We are in this together, and we believe that God will continue to strengthen you as you make this decision. Put these principles to work because life battles are ongoing 
And if you're not facing one currently, there's one waiting down the line for you. The word of God is real. It's true. Jehoshaphat, true God, won his battle without lifting a finger. He's the same God in Jehoshaphat's time and in our time. And he will do it for you.